This episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. author to the Web Designer's Idea book. Uh, it's a great book by Patrick McNeil. I wrote the blog design chapter. Um, other than my little snippet, the book is, I mean, my part's nice too, but the whole book as a whole is a great book, so you guys should definitely pick that one up. Uh, I don't get anything for it though, so I'm not plugging it that way. Uh, at present, I'm the director of web development at Neil Advertising and our sister company, Carboodle. Uh, Carboodle's going to be mentioned in this presentation, um, but I oversee anything and everything that goes through that door as far as web design or web development. And I also teach at Johnson & Wales University. And for the future, uh, we'd love to write a book, speak more, and continue to be a student of everything and anything. And that's it about me. So, WordPress. That was like perfect timing, right? <laughs> nice mood lighting. Got some crickets. <laughs> wow, that wasn't perfect time. <laughs> Alright, so up until recently, I really feel like WordPress wasn't even being presented as anything other than a blogging CMS. Uh, if you took a look, take a look right now at Wikipedia and how they define WordPress as an open source blog tool and publishing uh, platform powered by PHP. And uh, uh, up until just I think like July of last year, WordPress.org was more simply WordPress's uh, what you want to use when you want to work with your blogging software, not fight it. Uh, last year, it became WordPress's a web software you can use to create a beautiful website or blog. So uh, I think that we're starting to see that transition, that WordPress is no longer going to be just a blogging CMS. Um, some cool facts. Did you know that WordPress is used by over 13% of the 1 million biggest websites? Uh, I think that is a really cool fact because it just speaks to the fact that WordPress can power high traffic, huge websites, and uh, it's extremely versatile. Uh, we have a lot of work that goes through Neil Advertising, but everything that we do is pretty much built on WordPress, even if it's a five page small uh, personal website or if it's a large website like Carboodle, which I'll be showing later. Um, the reason for that is because I'm good at WordPress and I'm the main developer, the core developer at Neil Advertising. So I figure why use anything else? Uh, if I can make it work, do it easily and productively uh, and efficiently, seems like the right answer. So when do you consider WordPress to power your site? I say every single time. You should at least consider it. If it's something that you're good at, if you can develop WordPress and you can, um, you know, you know enough about it to make things work, then you should at least consider it, right? Um, and that's a lot about this talk is about uh, considering WordPress for your next job board project or inspirational site or uh, user generated sites, whatever it may be. It's at least open the doors and spark some ideas as to how we can use WordPress to power those types of sites. So here are some examples of web directories that uh, the one on the left is Carboodle, the automotive resource uh, directory, which I'll show you guys in a second. And the one on the right is Yelp, and I'm sure you guys are extremely aware of Yelp, how it works. Um, but, you know, directories and several other sites that I'm about to show you, they all share a lot of core features, and if you can accomplish those features with WordPress, you should be able to build these types of sites relatively simply. Uh, same thing with job sites. So has anybody ever seen Crop? I love Crop. I think it's a really beautifully designed job board. Uh, a lot of times with like Monster and Career Builder, it's uh, a very almost like IBM-esque, uh, but Crop is a very nice looking one. Uh, Jobs.Mashable is very particular to our industry assuming that we're all in the web industry. Um, so these are the same types of sites though. They're essentially uh, sites that are uh, posted by users, so the content is created by users. 
you do a lot of searching on it, and then you, um, you know, find those areas of, uh, of posted er content, like the, the job post, for example, and you interact with that exact element. But they're all built, again, on the same features, which I'll go over in a second. And user-generated content sites as well. So CSS Mania, which I live on that site, uh, DeviantArt, and uh, All Recipes. So All Recipes is a website where you can go on and post your own recipes. Um, I'm not saying that any of these sites are built on WordPress, but I'm just saying that we should look at the idea of how we can implement, uh, excuse me, how we can um, use WordPress to power these types of sites. So I'm gonna break off on the presentation for a second here and pull up these sites. So if we take a look at Carboodle, for example. Uh, Carboodle is, was built on, I wanna say, I can't even remember now, it's been a while, uh, 2.8-ish uh, of WordPress. I just exit out of there, so I'm not getting anywhere. Uh, but when you arrive at Carboodle, you can simply type in a zip code, and you're brought to, assuming I'm connected to the internet here, which I'm probably not at this point. Okay, off to a good start here, sorry. of my typing in the microphone. All right, so let's try this again. All right, so when you arrive at this page, you quickly see that we have some results here on the left. And each one of these is basically a post in WordPress. Um, this was before custom post types. We're in the process of pre-developing it now. Um, <coughs> but you can filter your results. For example, you might want um, the ability to have your kids play while your car is being serviced, or get a loaner car. Um, we'll go with that. Hit search, and it pulls up one result for that tire and auto service. So this entire site is built completely on WordPress, and it's got 21,000 directory listings. Um, if you click on it, on a specific listing, you get a page dedicated to that, that company. And they can have uh, photo galleries, which works nicely. Uh, they have all this information. So um, there were basically two elements that really kind of corresponded to building the site, and it was um, creating a way for us to grab the custom values or what we're going to be doing later tonight is custom post types to uh, grab the specific meta values for each bit of this content and uh, pull it into a page like this or allow for searching of that content. And the other element is giving the ability for users to generate this content on your behalf. So creating a 21,000 page website on your own is near impossible, but what you can do is allow or empower your users to create that content for you. And once you do that, the content is created on their time, not yours, and you're able to streamline that process and move a lot faster. Uh, the same types of things with job board sites. So if we look at a job board site like this, we're gonna be looking at the same kinds of things, and what you need to do is just kind of look at these types of pages and think about how you would build this for yourself. And what you can do is just break these elements down into, into pieces of WordPress uh, content. So for example, I was in New York, this could just be a post title. Uh, location, simply just a meta um, value that you know people fill in. The date, you know, how to use the date. We can have a subtitle, description, all these different values. How to apply with a URL that's or an email address that's simply just inserted there for simple use. Um, so there's really no reason that you can't power this by WordPress, right? The other thing is, is um, what if you have a site like like it's a regular website? and it's coupled with a job board. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can simply uh, allow for searching of category-specific data 
without having to write really any code at all or install any plugins uh, or subscribe to specific information. So you could set all these elements up as a custom post type as just job board or jobs. And uh, you can easily have people subscribe to that information, see it, use it, uh, search for it, etc. Same thing with Mashable site. Um, CSS Mania, so when you come to a site like this, again, it's user submitted content, and then you just break it down into these certain elements that you need it to be, whether it's a title, or the date, or the author. Uh, it could be a few bits of information, like URL, what country it was posted in, their, uh, their Twitter handle, all that stuff. Simply integrated into any kind of post. Even <coughs> arts is the same way, and all recipes, and we'll jump back to that in a second. So if you come back to the presentation, So here's some more little facts. Um, did you know you can search within a category or post type simply by changing the URL of the query? So if you're looking at a site like Search Engine Optimization Journal and you type in a uh, query for link building, obviously it would take you to a URL that looks a lot like this first line here. Uh, and that would give you results for anything that has the terms link building and, and post throughout the entire site. But simply by adding uh, the category into the uh, into the actual URL, um, you can then segregate and pull out results just that live in that category. And so that might seem overly simple right now, but if you think about it, you've just segregated your entire job board from the rest of the entire site. And now you can allow for searching within those results without having to do any extra work. So now you can have an entire website with a blog and everything that comes with a normal website, but now you're, say you're a staffing firm and you've uh, built a website for wants to have a job board of their own. Now you simply just put all the job posts into a specific category or you set it to a post type and now you can allow for searching directly into those results and you don't have to worry about separating out the data from all the other queries or uh, posts that might exist on that site. Uh, the other thing is that people may want to subscribe to that data. Well, a lot of people may not realize that all you have to do is the same exact thing. So if you have a URL, this is my mouse there. If you have a URL a lot like this, and this presents your RSS feed where you can subscribe, the same thing can be done here where you're adding a category and then the feed. And this allows you then to subscribe to that specific category's posts. So the same thing can be done with the job board. So now with two simple changes in the URLs of the strings for um, search results or for when you're linking to the feed, you've now separated that all of that data out and, and presented it in a way that users can grab it and, and use it easily. Um, the next part of this whole basic puzzle is creating custom post types. Um, Custom post types make it amazingly easy to organize, clarify, and search the data um, without having to integrate it directly into um, the rest of your site. So you basically segregate all that information. And when we built Carboodle, uh, custom, post, custom post types weren't available at the time. So we used uh, custom fields basically to power everything. And, uh, and now we're in the, in the makings of changing all that. But um, I love custom fields. I thought they were great. I thought they empowered me to do a lot of stuff. But now custom post types are just like, I think awesome. I, I just, I, I, it's, ah, I'm just passionate now, I'm sorry. I just love it. Uh, the other thing is allowing users to submit, create, and update data, right? So anytime that you're building any of these sites, if it's a job board or if it's a, a user-generated site like CSS Mania, you're not gonna get very far if the users can't submit their own data put it live, essentially. So what they could do is just simply fill out a form that sends to your email address, and you can grab that information, you can post it up yourself, and that's a possibility, but you want your site to take off. And if it takes off, and you're getting hundreds or thousands of submissions a day or a week or whatever it may be, you're not gonna be able to keep up with that. So you need to have a place where people can go in and submit their own data without having to uh, bother you, essentially. You wanna be more of a gatekeeper find out where the flaws are, seal those up, and uh, take down anything that's erroneous or spam or anything like that. 
but that's how you'll spend the majority of your time after that. So a custom post type is a lot like a post, but it's defined as custom because it allows you to uh, define all the basic functions of a post, but again, separate that data out. So you have, you see in the blue arrow here, a whole separate section here for jobs. All right, so a lot like what you would see for posts up here, the ability to um, view the posts or add a new post, you can also do the same thing now with jobs. And this makes it amazingly easy for your clients too, because if you're giving them admin access and they're kind of posting their own jobs uh, throughout the site, uh, you don't have to train them on how to do all the, uh, you know, the elements of custom fields and all that. Instead, you just allow them to view the, uh, the job itself and they can just fill out the basic information, which you can see here. So I went through the process of defining the specific um, values that this post uses. And instead of relying on the, um, like the editor and the excerpts and the fields and all that stuff, we can just define our own values here. And uh, like these are meta you know, fields, and then we can fill that with any data that we want to. Um, so you can see that there's a whole entire section here called job details. And this is right in the post editing field, editing field any, where you would be normally. And you'll see job description, and you can give them the details that they need. Uh, you can see job requirements, uh, the salary, the city, and the state. And the state's actually a drop down and allow you to select the state. And so it's basically just a form within your WordPress backend that dictates the exact values that you're allowing people to enter into those areas instead of a lot, uh, you know, giving them the freedom to post anything they want, you can dictate specifically what goes into those fields. Yeah? What version is this you use coming in? 3.0. 3.0? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, so if you want to take a look at how you can actually define your own custom post type, this is a very stripped down, simple version of the function that you would use to define a custom post. And uh, this is taken right from the codex, and the QR code will take you there, too. Uh, so you, again, I don't really see this as an opportunity for me to teach you guys how to code every single element that we're going to go over today, but rather give you guys an overview of how it's done. Uh, so if you look at this function, basically what it does is it, um, there we go. Uh, we just register a post type of jobs. We give it a name of jobs. You define some simple values here. So instead of creating a post, you post a job. Um, and then it defines these values. And then we define exactly what we want it to support within the editor itself. And the only thing I'm using in this instance is the title. So if we go back here, <coughs> um, the only default piece that I'm grabbing from what you would see in a normal post is the title itself. Everything else are specifically defined values that uh, we, we're going to set up in a second. So we rely on the title, and that's about it. Um, <coughs> from there, the next set of functions basically defines the meta boxes that we create within that separate custom post type. And we just call a quick little function here to basically echo out uh, the fields for the form. Once that's done, uh, the only thing that I'm not showing here that you have to do is save that data into the database. Uh, but I'm skipping that because what we're actually going to do is we're not really going to be using the backend admin section of WordPress for this example. We're going to be giving people the power to do it right from a form externally from WordPress. But this is, again, taken right from the codex, extremely easy. Uh, you can just look up how to add a meta box to your custom post site and you can review the function itself. Um, but it's you know, very basic, very easy. If you're, in, you know, you're into developing for WordPress at all, you should be able to cruise through this relatively simple, simply. So then we get into user power data and um, giving users the power to basically control the content that's going through your site. User-generated content, we're used to seeing that all the time with WordPress sites anyway. The comments, posts, articles, uh, media, videos, photos, all that stuff. That's pretty uh, 
basic stuff, but um, another term was user submitted content, and this is a lot of what we start to see when we build sites like CSS Main or job posts or sites like that, where instead of people contributing to data or content that already exists on your site, you're actually giving people the ability to create the content and submit specific things that may only have a short lifetime or a longer life period, depending on what it is, whether it's a job or if it's a, uh, you know, a website that's been submitted to CSS Media and that's gonna exist up there until the end of time. Um, and these types of things are like inspirational sites, directory listings, events, and job posts. And you can start to see how powerful user-generated content is because you're gonna go beyond uh, just the technical assets that it gives you, but you can see from like a marketing perspective or just trying to gain traffic to your site, once you enable your users to be able to take on this kind of role and power your sites this way, um, you'll start to see a huge increase in traffic. And we can see that with any, any of these sites. Once you get the ability to start submitting your own content, people flock to it. And um, it really becomes a powerful tool in your, in your uh, toolbox. All right, so when you start to open the gates and allow people to submit to your site, you've got to be careful of a few things. Um, and you've got to remember some built-in features of WordPress as well. So I run a website called aftergastrofitas.net. It's a uh, blog that I created for myself. And uh, it has a lot of great traffic. And we have a Facebook tab that's actually connected to it. And we have about 400 followers. And it's a really great community people. And I was thinking to myself, how could I really get these people to engage beyond just simply um, just talking about what's going on? And one thing that makes a lot of sense for that group or my group is sharing recipes for specific foods that are involved with uh, people who are post-surgery. Um, <clears throat> now, we could do, go right on the Facebook and we could share those, but what I thought about doing was opening up the blog to create an entire section of that site just dedicated to recipes for people who have had gastric bypass. And I was playing around with different ideas of how I could get people to submit that data. And by far the simplest, fastest solution that I could come up with was enabling posts by email through WordPress. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this before. You log into WordPress, you set up an email account so that anytime an email gets sent to that specific email address, it grabs certain elements of that email and uses it to fill out in the data of a custom I mean, excuse me, just a regular post. Uh, so what I was able to do was just grab simple elements from a field, <coughs> uh, from a form, and empower all those people to start uh, creating their own recipes. And what it was was just you know choosing a title and uh, filling in a small content area where they had a few hundred characters or, or words, rather, to uh, fill in the recipe and submit it. And then it would go directly to the website, it would post it, and uh, I would have it as a draft, and then I could, I could uh, publish it. Now, this, is a, this was a good solution for me because it was a small website. We have 400, 400 fans on Facebook, but probably you know, two, 300 of them are actually active. So of that, maybe 10% are actually gonna post recipes if I'm lucky, so that's 20 people a month. Uh, it's by no means out of control, and it's not something I can't handle easily just by submitting the drafts, and it's a good community of people. So, and the benefit of it is that I actually put, I can actually put the form itself right on the Facebook uh, tab, so people can submit the forms right from Facebook. Right? Uh, so that made a lot of sense for that specific uh, solution. But would that work for a job board or a directory or any of these other types of sites where you have very specific data that you're trying to implement, where it's like a, a location or a salary or things like that? So that probably wouldn't work. So you have to give them access directly to the back end of WordPress, essentially, to update those specific custom post types. So with that, once you open those doors, you have to make the assumption that everyone is evil. And uh, I, I, it should say, you're not paranoid. Um, and the, the truth of the matter is, you're not. If you just make the assumption that everybody is evil and that everybody's out to get you, you're more likely to catch spam or loopholes or whatever it may be before it happens. All too often I think that people are trusting and they think that they have, uh, they're going to be, I guess, uh, left out of the uh, I got hacked crowd, right? But it doesn't happen that often, so we, we tend to put it out of our minds, but you have to be prepared for it. So we have to make the assumption that someone out there
there is going to try and do something equal to our site. With that in mind, um, should we give them direct admin access? So when I was first contemplating the ideas that I had for job boards and things like that, I thought about giving people the ability to create a role in WordPress, uh, sign up and become a subscriber or a contributor or whatever it may be that I define as the roles for that person, give them back-end admin access, and just take out specific features of their roles. Uh, and that seemed to be extremely um, time-consuming. And it left a lot of doors open for them to be able to do certain things. And honestly, WordPress doesn't make it easy just to eliminate the features of, say, adding a post. So uh, with some advice and some uh, help from a WordPress hacker's email, um, I got to just basically creating a form that lives outside of the admin in the main section of the site uh, where you basically can't access it, access it unless you're logged in. And instead of being brought to the admin, you're redirected to that form. And that form will directly update the um, post in the database. So basically what you do is you have someone log in. They can register and log in through WordPress the way that they normally would. And once they do that, they're redirected to another page. So this is an example from my website if uh, we were to, I would start putting job boards on. Uh, a user would register with the site and you can define registration very simply. Uh, we can add certain plugins that allow us to do um, a few different things that make our lives a lot easier. One is creating a specific role for people who are going to be posting. So instead of relying on the default roles of subscriber or contributor, you can actually define custom roles for individuals who are going to be posting jobs. And that will make it a lot easier on you to define those roles, what they can and cannot do. And if you know you ever need to take down that section of the site, you know exactly what users were posting for that section of the site, and you can eliminate them or their access. Um, so there are a lot of great plugins out there that can, one, create custom roles, define what those roles can do. Um, and then there's great plugins out there that uh, allow you to create custom registration pages. So if I were to actually jump out of here real quick <coughs> and go to Carboodle again. So this is looks a lot like the WordPress uh, login or registration page, but it has some slight differences. For one, it doesn't have the WordPress logo at the top. Uh, and then I was able to put in some custom values here and um, get people to agree to a terms of use, which is obviously <laughs> broken. <laughs> Nothing better than finding something that's wrong with your website and a group of people on the presentation. <laughs> itself from being inside the page. But this one too, even better. Great. So anyways, let's assume <laughs> this was working well. Uh, and then we can put like CAPTCHA on it if you want to, and then the user can register. Um, and this is a very basic plugin that allows you to define the values and, and um, allow someone to register with the site. Let's focus on the top of the site. This part is a lot better. Uh, I was wondering why the scroll is so long. But there are even other, there are plugins out there that are really great and they allow you to completely <coughs> define the look and feel of the site to match the rest of the site so you don't look like you've been brought to another page. And then there's even registration plugins that allow you to register, uh, for example, right from this page using a little Ajax or JavaScript. So you click here, a form would appear, you can register, hit submit, you're not even brought away from the page. Um, and the reason I'm bringing up plugins is because I'm a huge advocate for not reinventing the wheel. I think a lot of times uh, people tend to think that they have to do something custom because otherwise, what am I doing? I'm relying on somebody else's code, but I'm kind of doing that with WordPress already, right? So uh, I think that if you can find a reliable plugin that people are, you know, can advocate and say that it works well and you know it's not full of errors, uh, use it. So um, let's assume that someone's now registered and they've logged in. Uh, they would then get redirected to another page. So instead of being brought to the admin, 
uh, like you would normally do anytime that you log into WordPress. You would be brought to a page that looks a lot more like this, and it would have the, probably the same look and feel of the rest of your website, and it would have just a basic form. And if you look, these form values are pretty much exactly the same from what we saw on the custom post site. And this allows you basically to just update the values of those that custom post site from an external form. And you just need to update the database directly from here. So once a user submits the form, that data would then be prop, um, you know, put right into the database, saved for later use, and then when they're brought back, you would, excuse me, you would uh, just populate the data in that form with whatever was already there. Um, so you eliminate the problem of editing because then the form itself can just be resubmitted with the new data every single time that something gets changed. Um, you know, you could even do a lot cooler stuff. Instead of having uh, specific forms like this, you can do something that's a lot more like um, in uh, Mad Libs form. Have you guys seen those before? Yeah, um, I can bring up an example real quick if uh, that helps. Uh, so, <laughs> has everybody done a Mad Libs before? Nope. nope. All right, so Mad Libs basically allows you to, uh, yes, this is my website, I'm sorry, I'm plugging it. I'm not really plugging it, but. All right, so here's an example of a uh, Mad Libs form, right? So instead of having the uh, form in a traditional format, you're allowing them to submit the data, uh, basically like in line, of in, in the paragraph, right? So you can kind of read this uh, fluidly, right? I need a website for my conference. I'd really like to talk to you about this now because it needs to be live yesterday. Uh, and it kind of creates like a fun, interactive way for people to fill out a form. And I've read a few great articles on the fact that it converts a lot better than regular forms do because people get interested and they have fun with it. As you can see, uh, you know, Darth Vader at the darkside.com is the default address. So you can start to see some fun things with it. And something like this, I intend to have uh, you know, actual Mad Libs up there where you would insert like a verb or a noun you could submit the best one each month. But to go back to the actual um, presentation, <coughs> we could actually create that, take the data and insert it into um, the HTML the way it would be presented on the post itself. So instead of <coughs> relying on a form, you could have your job look a lot like this. Right? And so when you go to submit the job post, Anytime you could click one of these elements and it could come back to the form element and then you could just start typing and then hit submit. So, yeah. Back in the Mad Libs, is that a plugin? Nope, that's something I just coded. Uh, actually, it uses Contact Form 7. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of that form. Um, and uh, I'll jump back to that real quick. So, no, that's fine. Uh, so, basically, what I did was I just took uh, you know a regular P tag and uh, wrapped it around simple input tags and used the placeholder uh, with HTML5. So when you click on it and click off, the information's there. Uh, so that's basically, that's all it was. If you view this, the code on this, it's it looks just like a paragraph with the form kind of melded together. It's very simple. Um, so what I was saying was, because of the fact that we're using a form and not using the WordPress admin, we get a lot more freedom with the creativity that we can we can uh, use to implement the actual inputting of this data. So anytime you have elements like this, just picture this wrapped in like a box right here. And uh, you can have these elements clickable and, and you can start typing right in here. And instead of having this look a lot more like a form, it actually looks like the post. So as people are typing, they're getting the feel of what it's going to look like once it's live. And you don't have to have the demo or the preview or anything that stuff, you get that feeling right away. Um, and then you could just have a submit button right here at the top, or a big submit button right here. I'm ready to post this, and I'm ready to make it live. And then it integrates everything directly right here. So I think you guys can kind of envision how you can kind of go the extra step with that. Uh, and then, like I said, once you're done editing it, it will pre-populate the data with whatever's in the database now so that you don't have to worry about having an editor screen versus a thank you page or having people double back to where they were, whatever that may be. All right, so the login and the redirect, right? So um, 
you have to use the login redirect filter to redirect people back to a certain page that you want to define. But like I said, uh, I love using plugins when they work and when they're reliable. And I found uh, this one called Peter's Login Redirect. I always wish that like the great plugins could be redefined with like a better title that's like really cool. Because Peter's Login Redirect sounds just lazy. Uh, but the code is nice. It's very intuitive, very easy. Uh, you have a simple settings section in the, in the, the settings area. You go in, <coughs> you click, uh, for example, subscriber, and you just tell it where you want it to redirect. So, so if you define your custom roles, you might have job poster as a role. And then you would just select job poster and the page that it would redirect to get to. And on that page, you just write a little snippet of code that says that you have to be logged in to access this page. And that basically secures everything for you pretty nicely. The other thing you can do is actually define with this plugin not just roles, but actual access. So uh, we all know that there's a, maybe we don't all know, but there's a hierarchy of access that you can define with those roles, whether they can add a post, or delete a post, or whatever it may be. And so you can define the level of access that someone has and then redirect them over to something. And then you can actually even go down to the user base level. So if you have something that's a lot more specific um, without you know, thousands of users, but you may have something that's a lot smaller, you can then redirect specific users to specific uh, pages on your site. And that would actually work out really well if you could uh, make it a little bit more dynamic and have people's profiles be the same, or the, the URL be the same uh, basic structure as their profile username. So you could have jessierfriedman.com slash username, and then you can redirect people to their own profiles, essentially, and then allow for editing right then and there. So we kind of go back to looking at this a little bit more objectively and trying to figure out how we can take these sites to the next level using WordPress, right? So basically every site that I mentioned today, whether it was Yelp or Google or um, CSS Mania or whatever it is, they were organizing specific data into um, elements that were searchable, um, that were segregated from the rest of the site. And uh, could be updated uh, easily, right? Um, <coughs> the custom post, post types really empower us to do that type of thing very easily, as I mentioned before. Cus again, custom post types allow you to basically segregate out that data, uh, make it easily searchable and uh, subscribable and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, in some aspects, makes WordPress like a full-fledged CMS. Um, giving users the power to update or submit content is like the last, the second or last big step, right? Um, like I said before, you can't really get to that level of having like a CSS mania kind of site without people submitting that data on their own. And you can't have them doing it other than just giving them direct access. It's just not gonna work for you. So the great thing about that is again, you empower your users and they will repay you for that. Uh, they will add content frequently, they will travel back to the site, they will share the information so that they can even, even get more traffic. Um, this will eliminate the need for admins to create content, so you're saving yourself a lot of time and you're saving your developers a lot of time. Um, no more converting email submissions into posts, so the thing that I was doing where basically I was using that simple email form to submit it, a recipe, um, that was even going one step further, but before we had that ability or you know, you may not even be using what you have uh, available to you, you might be taking data just submitted from forms, <laughs> so now you won't have to do that anymore. And uh, data can go live at any time, so you no longer rely on your schedule to put information live, instead you're doing it at two in the morning because it's whenever your client or your user is on there posting that information. So some other things that I wanted to kind of bring up as just to kind of spark some ideas in your mind. Um, if you could do any of these three things, uh, you can, again, open the doors to huge advantages for your website, right? So number one, ratings and reviews tied to individual comments. This is something that we're doing on Carboodle, but once you do that, uh, this is different than having a single post with a thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, we see that all the time, or you just rate a specific post from like one to five stars. 
right? But what they usually do, and for the most part, all the plugins I've really ever seen, um, just kind of pool all those ratings together into one single average rating, right? But once you uh, tie them to specific comments, now you're rating and reviewing uh, jobs or directors and uh, listings or movies or books or whatever it is that you want people reviewing individually. So you're tying people's specific ratings to their posts and it looks a lot more like sites like, like Netflix, for example. If you went to Netflix right now and clicked on a movie, you would see everybody's individual rating and their review. If you went to Amazon.com and you clicked on a book, you would see everybody's individual rating and review and you tie them together. This allows you to really go that extra step, right? And make a site that's a little bit more of a directory and more of a, a review site, um, just by tying those two things together. Um, the second one I love, I, I, I've been trying to develop this myself, but I've also talked to a few um, developers who have uh, contact, like Contact Form 7 or have um, Contact Form plugins to do this specific thing. Uh, if you take a form and you put it on uh, into your theme, so that the theme itself pr produces the form on every single post, the only thing that's missing from allowing people to submit that form to the right person is tying the author's email address to that form. Now, I may be like kind of losing you guys, but if you think about it from this point of view, is that if you have the job post, right, and you have everybody creating those job posts, how are they contacting? Well, the example that we showed, they may just be presenting the author's email address directly on that post, and then they have to submit the email via an editor, right? But if we could get a form, uh, if you could just easily develop a plugin that grabs the value of the author's email address and submits the data to that, then all of a sudden you've now built this element, this form directly into the actual site itself, and every single job post submission. Every time somebody submits their resume and applies for a job, it no longer gets circulated in, you know, in an inconvenient way. Now it's going directly to whoever posted that job. And right then and there, you're opening that door to you know becoming a more of a full-fledged job site. Um, and the last one is adding latitude and longitude as meta values to a, a, a post. Uh, once you add latitude and longitude, you can easily integrate Google Maps and you can start showing posts that exist in a query right on a map, okay? So I'll show you an example of that uh, being done actually rather well. RepairPal is actually a competitor of Carboodle. Um, you type in a zip code, you can see <coughs> the results here on the left but you can also see them on the map here on the right. And all this is doing is grabbing their individual latitude and longitude values and inputting it into a Google map um, that's embedded on the page, which is actually done rather easily. Um, and actually, this is rather nice. You, as, you roll, as you scroll, you can see the pins actually replace them. Oh, that's cool. Now again, I'm not saying that RepairPal was built on WordPress, but you can see how quickly you can convert a WordPress search result where you're querying results, right? Like we said, uh, for example, the job posts. You can show, uh, you know, you can just query certain job posts in, in that category, grab the latitude and longitude of those posts, and then display them right on the map. So then you can see the jobs in a specific area. Now, obviously, jobs are not going to be as densely located as, for example, car repair shops would be. But you could you know, expand that map to be regional, so all of New England or all of uh, you know, the West Coast or something like that. And then you can quickly see what jobs are in your area just by adding the latitude and longitude to those custom post types. So I hope that I sparked some ideas in your mind. Hope you guys realized that it is possible to build these really awesome, cool websites with WordPress and to maybe move away from our blogging CMS title that we have. Um, and uh, that's about it. I think I have probably 10, 15, 20 minutes for questions, so. Uh, I have a password for coverage. You know, if you pass, you just say login instead of password. Yep, so maybe you can actually utilize the
WordPress login the way you would normally. And then on that page, you, just, you can click the forget your password button. Just you, you can have them log in just as they would normally log in with your site. So you'd get like many, many users, just treat them all individually. And yep, they, right, them. exactly. They would be just, they would be defined as users as they normally would be. It's uh, PHP and jQuery. I, I don't know. I think they have their own custom CMS that they use. I actually had a conversation with them, and they um, they just basically. So it, it continues to query the database and pull those results as you scroll. <coughs> and then it just grabs the <coughs> the latitude and longitude of those posts that were in focus in the window. And sent them over to the. Yeah, you can actually you can tie it back to when something becomes visible and then becomes invisible on the page. Yeah, so if we the, the pins accordingly. Right. So what they're actually doing is just, and, and it's actually pretty well built. If I change the window itself, you'll see the pins have started to disappear. So it's based off of what's actually in between, basically from here to here. And then it just grabs those latitude and longitude points and drops the pin right on Google Maps. Yeah. You mentioned a site, I'm not sure if it was yours or not, that had you know, 21,000 records. Yeah, it was uh, Carboodle. Carboodle. Mm -hmm. How was the performance on that? Did you, uh, and I guess a follow up question, is there, uh, did you use any caching or caching plugins? Yep. Uh, yeah, and I, forgive me because it's been a little while since I've had my hands in that project. But I think it was just WP Cache is the plugin that we use, um, and uh, it worked well. We haven't had. Uh, I'm not going to say that we've had thousands of visitors a month, um, but we've had absolutely no real lag time, other than the things that were built into the site that uh, was kind of like me choking the designer on because um, he had to have. Uh, let me bring it back up. Extremely, it's extremely he image heavy. So that was like the biggest, that's the biggest problem with the site right now is that we have these enormous images. They have to be extremely high quality because otherwise they're just going to look really poor. And the fact that we didn't use just traditional forms. So these forms are actually not forms. They're um, like, I think this is a list actually. And so it allows you just to click it, but it's using jQuery to basically uh, power those forms. And if I could go back in time, I would have um, convinced my creative director to allow me to do something that's a little bit more simple. But that was the biggest hurdle to overcome was just how heavy these things were. Uh, the querying of posts are, is relatively quickly. Um, <coughs> we don't let you, we don't grab, you know, the good thing is, is that it grabs a single zip code and it defaults to a small area. I mean, my battery's gonna die. Um, it defaults to a small uh, area, so the results aren't in the thousands by any means. They're in dozens or maybe hundreds. So we haven't had a huge buy time. I think to answer your question a little bit more in terms of like caching and post tables, is it'll scale to and hundreds of thousands of posts pretty easily. Yeah. Um, and even like the query class itself will let you do like really advanced things now between post metal and taxonomy and pull out specific results pretty quick. And if it's something that you query multiple times and the WordPress object cache will hold on to that so that it doesn't have to I think a lot of people get afraid of using WordPress to power thousands or hundreds of thousands of posts. But um, has anybody heard of Mashable? I, I brought it up at Mashable.com, right? So Mashable.com has, I think they're in like a million, million five visitors a month. They have probably tens of thousands of posts, if not maybe 50,000 posts, more than that. Um, and that's completely built on WordPress. Uh, and, and you could even go as far as putting all of your content onto like a CDN and deliver it over that way if you're worried about speed that way too. Yeah.
filter the custom post type by above the query. So when you do the you know the, the port the loop, you just define that you want to pull from that custom post type first, and then it and then it just grabs from those. Are you familiar with like WP query? Yeah. So you just specify post oh, by post array or type or what equals whatever it is. Right. I know you can query custom like custom uh, you know metadata and things like that. Yeah. Um, post type parameter. Yep. You oh, post, okay. post okay. underscore okay. type and okay. then it just pulls those out. Uh, and keep in mind too that like WordPress pages yeah. are just a post type. Attachments yeah. are a post type. Menus are a post right. type. So the fundamental structure obviously is, is you're still the same thirteen or eleven fields. Yep. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, and it's, and it's put into the same table on actual point. Yeah, there's no schema changes at all. It's the exact same. Yeah. It's new from the yeah. from, from 3.0, so it's, it's relatively new. Um, based on, I think you said that Kabuto is built on WordPress 2.8, and based on how heavily you customize WordPress and what you have to bolt onto it, does that preclude you from ever upgrading that installation to newer versions of WordPress? And what happens if there's a security problem and yeah. now you really need to apply patches and you have this really souped up app that it's kind of, you're locked in? Or uh, you well, the beauty there? of all of Carboodle is just a simple plugin. So I was able to just uh, <coughs> just define all of the features in, in, in one single plugin, actually. So it hasn't stopped anything from updating or anything. The problem is, is that uh, defining um, the time, I guess, to redevelop the plugin itself to use things like custom post types. Um, well, that's an architectural change of of WordPress. So you can take advantage of a new feature with yes. custom types. I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. I'm on top of the CMS and I've heavily customized it. Now there's some big security thing that came out, and they're saying, oh, you, you have to upgrade to the next version. What I'm saying is, is that I built Carboodle on 2.7 or 8 okay. at the time, so I didn't have custom post types avail available to me at that time. So I built it on that. But, um, but it hasn't stopped me from updating it to, to for security oh, so you updates. Can continue, you can continue. Yeah, updating. exactly. Okay. So you yeah. just make sure that what you do doesn't, hopefully doesn't break going forward. Well, I yeah, I just got to, right. And, and, and it, it usually is version so that it doesn't, you're not going to break it by upgrading. No, just coming from a developer background, you yeah. know, the CMS is, you kind of get locked into whatever the version was at the time. And you have to go through a lot of extra effort. If you want to upgrade, then you have to take a look at the code base. Well, a lot, like I said, a lot of what we used was basically just um, custom fields. And custom fields are still available, and you can still use them the same way that you wanted I, I did back then. Um, it's just that I didn't have the advantage of custom post types at I'm that just, time. I'm looking more at the, the, the security vulnerability because it's so widely adopted, obviously. You get to leverage all the, the themes and plugins and other things so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you're also locked into a platform. So right. it's a good platform. Uh, but I think if you build it correctly, utilizing the right tools, for example, like you just build a, a plugin around it and then you don't rely on specific elements, so you allow yourself to expand and, and be smarter and, and, so you'd have to and get upgrade. Keeping, that, keeping things at a plugin level, not going in setting up your own new tables and, and oh, no yeah, PHP yeah. queries or anything like that. No, 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 no. Build it yeah, around absolutely. Plugin Everything plugin was there. completely built into a single plugin, separate from the core. I never touched a single core file. I never yeah. touched the database. The, the core directly. team is also very diligent about, <laughs> about not oh, yeah, they got to be functions. And right. Well, yeah, yeah, so the idea is like a lot of what has made WordPress, in my opinion, what has like, made WordPress a little bit more widely adopted is the emphasis on backwards compatibility. Okay. So future versions of WordPress should always be as backwards compatible as possible in almost every single way. So very few data schema changes to, like, to the database, if ever, because it isn't just your install, it's 30 million installations right. that need to run a bunch of queries to update all these database tables. So custom post types implemented zero da like data schema changes, right. and security fixes are usually real, real incremental. And even for Jesse's case, when he decides to, to switch to custom post type, and move his 21,000 posts over, you can do it in one query if you have enough memory to pull it off, because it's just switching the post type from post to, you know, carboodle, whatever it is you want to switch it to, and everything just moves right over just because of the way that the data is stored. Right. So, like, as long as you're building everything at a plugin type level where it's attached to all of the hooks, you're you're golden Great. for updates going forward. Excellent.
I'm surprised that nobody's asked me how I got 21,000 posts because I can go for a second. So. Right? Slowly? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I was, uh, we went through uh, data that was given to us from a, a third party company and we actually formulated the data just to serve directly into the, uh, the database itself via MySQL. And, uh, we went right into the back end and then we refreshed WordPress and all of a sudden we had 21,000 posts. Mm -hmm. It actually worked out pretty nicely. <laughs> for an uh, application that has, uh, you said, a lot of intense graphics like that, do you tend to host the graphics on a different server? They, uh, I think, personally, I'm, I'm not a systems architect by any means, but um, if you're looking at that kind of influx, and I'm going to lose power here. I wish I had a Mac battery right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I would say that a lot of it's going to be based off your traffic. Right? So you could have extremely heavy websites if you only have 10 visitors a month. So you have to watch your traffic, is what I would say. Uh, other people might have a, you know, different opinions for when you move forward with that. Yeah. CSS file to override the file, you know, what they find, and then you just have to input that import again. Um, but anytime that you edit someone else's stuff, you have to worry about that, I guess. But John, by the way, John is actually from Automatic, so if you guys have actual questions, you can, like, real questions that I can't answer. He's the guy. So Contact Form 7 is weird because it comes with a bunch of CSS files, but, like, it sort of, it sort of lures you into modifying them. And then when you update it, all that goes away. If to prevent that specifically with Contact Form 7, there's another plugin that's really, really light that's uh, like custom CSS. It's like it's, it's actually we use it on .com, but um, but it's just Safe CSS, I, th I think it's called, and it just lets you on your active theme just have actually stores it as a post type, and uh, it just lets you run like additional CSS on the fly. So instead of modifying Contact Form 7 and then Get it, having it get blasted out when you do an update. Just install Safe CSS, and then underneath your appearance tab in the admin, you have Safe CSS as an option, and it's just a big text area. And then when you make edits to it, it'll keep revisions of it as you make them. So you'll never lose those. Those are just extra CSS bits that you put in for whatever reason you want to. So it's not specifically for Contact Form 7, but it would alleviate that pain for you in the future. That's what I would do. That's awesome. Does that override CSS from other? As long as you write your CSS to override whatever else is in there, right? Great, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take that as the opportunity to shut down. Uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Can you still submit things to a custom post type? Yeah. You can? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's some things that are weird with XML, uh, with XML RPC right now, and 3.2 has fixes for it, for like host status and weird things, because I don't think that without there being another plugin that you can host directly to it and then have it. There's something weird with it that's that 3.2 fixes, and I know there are a bunch of XML RPC fixes that are in trunk right now. Uh, but you can do that. And that's actually how BBPress used to integrate with WordPress like years ago. Uh, so you can you can still do that, right? Does that answer the yeah, question? Yeah, kind of? I got like connect with Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.
guys, two quick things. Um, number one is we promised to make this announcement and forgot. Um, if you're in or around the Providence area, check out our sister meetup, uh, WordPressProvidence.com. It's run by Jake Bowman. He's right here. And number two is you guys are welcome to hang around for a little bit, but just know that the cleanup crew cannot start cleaning up until we all leave, and then, then they can go home. So just be cautious about that.